so thanks prince thanks for this opportunity and you know it is always great to share knowledge because that is how you know uh we have also progressed and let's keep the you know the wheel going on so regarding today's topic multidisciplinary investing and uh, uh, why this is exciting because uh what i have seen and you know uh, i have been in market for last uh, almost 14 15 years actively or passively and the way i have seen markets uh, emerging especially in india uh, you know somebody who is a fundamental investor he used to be a fundamental investor somebody who is a chartist or technical guy he used to be a technical guy even till 5 6 years back it was kind of you know not so popular to you know adapt to both the skills uh, you know but uh, recently in last one two years i can see there is lot of uh, you know emphasis and there is lot of openness to adapt to whatever it takes whether it is you know fundamental technical uh, which is good because every skills bring something to the table and that is where i thought why not to discuss on this topic uh, so feel free to ask anything regarding this kind of multidisciplinary investing rather than bucketing in one style uh, because this is where the world is going and this is where investing is going and you know whether we talk of auto or we talk of any sector hybrid is the future and i feel even in investing or trading hybrid is the future so that is where you know all this multidisciplinary investing comes in uh, now my definition of multidisciplinary investing is not only restricted to fundamental or technical but also multiple styles so uh, it is always like okay are you a value investor are you a growth investor are you a trader are you an investor you know these kind of questions so when we say multidiscipline it means we are being open to learn everything which can add value and then see experiment where we are more aligned uh, which is more suited to us Uh, in terms of our behavior in terms of our learning ability in terms of our investing style in terms of our psyche and then once we know you know what is our strength and weakness then choose that path so that is how i would define multidisciplinary investing which will you know include the process which will include different types of our uh, decision making system which will include different types of timeline expectation in terms of the whole investing or trading process and a combination of all all of that is multidisciplinary investing as per me so let us keep uh, all the discussion going you know keeping this topic uh, prince uh, so let me explain yeah so i'll tell you so see the first thing is uh, we always think like fundamental ka matlab hai ki pnl balance sheet dekhna or technical ka matlab hai chart dekhna uh, but the question is uh, why they are significant and what is their importance and many times i get this question ki fundamental se kiya to technical se i hope we can do english right so see the fundamental it brings different kind of data to the table technical it brings different kind of data to the table so as a investor or as a trader the goal is common everybody wants to make money and that is where all these styles they sink in so everybody i am talking only about the long market so everybody wants to buy at a lower price and sell at a higher price that is how we make money where the difference comes the difference comes out of multiple things the difference comes whether we want to make money in two days or two month or two year or two decades that is the first the second difference comes how do we want to make money what is our process so do you want to make money by understanding the quality of the company or do we want to make money by understanding the buyer and seller seller and the demand supply equation the third thing is uh, when we want to make money are we trying to make money by simply being a uh, observant of uh, you know Uh, the demand supply equation or are we trying to make money by betting on the jockey which could be a management so there are multiple things and first one needs to decide where he is aligning so first we need to understand ourselves are we interested in making money in two days or are we interested in making money over two years and that itself will differentiate first level where we want to go the second is are we interested in making money by understanding the company fundamental management fundamental or are we interested in making money by understanding is the share in 
ओवर सप्लाई और अंडर सप्लाई एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट बिकॉज दैट इज द क्रक्स ऑफ डेटा अ फंडामेंटल डेटा विल टेल यू अबाउट द क्वालिटी ऑफ द कंपनी द क्वालिटी ऑफ द मैनेजमेंट अ टेक्निकल डेटा विल टेल यू टूडे वेदर द बायर इज ओवर पावरिंग और दू नो सेलर इज ओवर पावरिंग सो दीज आर टू डिफरेंट थिंग्स एंड दे हैव देयर ओन इंपॉर्टेंस and as i said the goal is common the goal is to buy at a certain price and sell at a higher price that is how everybody makes profit but in order to do that the question is what drives the prices now what drives the prices that is where all these factors come so company's fundamental its balance sheet its cash flows it has one role to play the valuation has one role to play the quality of management has one role to play the execution has one role to play the news has one role to play the overall market sentiment has one role to play uh, how many buyers and sellers are there in the market buying and selling that share that has a uh, importance so there are so many factors which impact the price but which factor impacts in which time horizon that is where all the difference comes and whenever we look at the trade data which is your daily buy sell price data that is what impacts the price in the shorter term but when i say shorter term it could be 10 minutes but it could be even 6 month to 1 year which people think that 1 year is uh, not a short term but even the buyer and seller behavior can impact prices for 6 month to 1 year in fact uh, the whole 2018 19 when small caps index went out of favor because there was no money interested so we need to evaluate that what are the factors which are driving and when you evaluate these factors then you see that there are certain factors which are driven by fundamental and there are certain factors which are give, driven by what we call technical or demand supply or trade data and all the things so <coughs> then we need to decide that what is our time horizon what is our expectation and which are the factors which are driving and then we need to take a call whether we are interested in ultra short term factors or short term factors or mid term factors or long term factors or a combination of all of these and that is how we take our call so first thing is you should know that you know what is your strength your strength is more around understanding financials understanding management understanding businesses or your strength is more around analyzing uh, mathematical data like what you see head and shoulder and all that is just a outcome you have to understand the mathematics and you know the numbers behind it what is a moving average what is a rsi what is a demand supply what is price so if that is your area of interest then you should focus on trading also you need to take care of what is your time horizon expectation and then you should you should decide but you can start with one and start learning other also if it excites and over a period of time you can try to blend both of them I have sort of uh, like started from one side of being technical or or fundamental, and what time he felt that uh, combining both, what made him believe that combining both will give him a better output. Anything of that sort uh, of his insight, he can share. That would be great. Ah, uh, sure, Ravi. So, uh, see, the first thing is everybody has to start somewhere, and until we don't start, we don't know what we like. so until somebody will do fundamental or technical he will not know what he likes and what he doesn't like and same happened with me i started with one and then over time i learned the other one and learning parallelly now what happens is as i said different kinds of data bring different value to the table so let us say let us say i did a fundamental investing first and let us say the stock is not going anywhere now why the stock doesn't go anywhere a very simple reason is because maybe those who can move the prices they don't believe in my theory maybe they are not believing in my theory today which i am seeing a simple reason why prices move is you have more buyers and the and seller and sometimes it can happen for one day the price will go 5% up next day you have more sellers than buyer it will go down <coughs> so for the price to consistently move it always needs buyers overpowering sellers and that is why prices can keep going up 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 or down 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 so only knowing fundamental is good if you have your conviction but let us say you have your conviction we are waiting for 2 years and the stock price is not moving now what happens and this is my understanding these are my mistakes that sometimes i did bet on the right set of company but i kept waiting and it didn't move and when i left it started moving and that left me perplexed that you know why did it move after i left and why it didn't move for 2 years and the answer lies in demand supply 
the big buyers came only when i left the company i will give you one example and again it's my personal view people can agree or disagree if we look at itc like 2016 to 20 itc was but of all jokes and my tweets are there from last two years if you look itc the whole price fall which happened uh, because of the esg wave where some 165 plus mutual fund they signed on the esg compliance and the fia started selling itc and itc is like a 2 lakh 3 lakh market you know cap company not everybody can you know absorb itc like a small cap stock and the fii holding in itc between 2017 to 21 fell from 22% to 8.75% and this whole fall was nibbled by the dii's which are mutual funds but when you have such a big seller who is selling for whatever reason keeping fundamental technical you know esg whatever but the problem is you have a seller who is selling from 2 years 3 years and then there is not enough people to nibble then what will happen to the price it's not like people didn't know in 2016 that hotel is a shitty business or whatever you call right now hotel is also a rosy business but people knew everything nothing itc has done anything new in last 3 4 years everything was known and still at one time it got a 45 p and at another time it got a 15 p and the whole reversal of the itc price has happened only when again fia has started buying back so now you had fia also buying and dia is also buying and retail was you know also buying so this is what it took for itc to reverse and of course then the sentiments and the results and all of that comes into play but many times even in trading you will see the results are very good but the price is not rising the price is falling so what they say all the good news is already factored because the buyers you know they already knew when they purchase so these are the things which made me think that okay even if i have conviction i am losing patience when things are not moving for two years so how should i know that you know sometimes more patience is required so these are the places where i realize technical has importance the second is asset allocation and how do you you know increase your positions and again there are certain psychological levels we call like everybody talks about this support and resistance basically these are levels you have big change of hands happening and big guys they move the price uh you know if i buy some 2 lakh rupee share it is not going to move but somebody who can buy you know 200 crores of share he is going to move the prices so the idea is to get benefited from them and leverage the fundamental skill and you know increase the overall conviction in terms of buying increase the timing because if you are making money over a period after 2 years of wait if that wait can be reduced to 1 year by studying additional data point which is bringing a different kind of value why not to do it so these were the reasons and there have been stocks like uh, i will tell you ambiga cotton was one stock i identified when it was at 1000 rupees it came down to 500 rupee and then again it went to 2700 rupee so why despite of good fundamental the stock was falling i mean so this is where the buyer and seller equation all of that comes and if we understand how it is happening and if we can crack that then it helps to leverage the whole fundamental skill in a different level and it helps us to you know increase the cagr increase the better entry the other reason why technical i will tell you the third reason uh, i have been good in buying and identifying good companies but timing as i said that was one issue the other issue was selling and being a retail investor we don't have that kind of information advantage so many times we are the last leg of information flow and by the time the news comes in the public everything is done in terms of price so how do you you know avoid a bad news where the damage is already done and again the answer is by following those who are the first leg of information flow and those who are the first leg of information flow they will be the first one to take that action and this whole trade data captures all those actions and what you see in a technical analysis is a way to understand what those big guys are doing so even in selling decision improvements you know the technical analysis comes to help because of simple reason information asymmetry which happens in fundamental unless you are that kind of fundamental investor who is you know totally connected to the ground you are talking to the supplier you are talking to the vendor you have understanding of on the ground level what is happening in the business which many of us may not have so where technical analysis comes as a you know alternative skill to do the same so these were some of the reasons why you know i try to leverage technical apart from fundamental and i realize there is a potential there is a value and then by blending both of them i could uh, you know identify that you know there is a incremental value in terms of buying in terms of timing in terms of allocation in terms of selling
depends like if i talk about myself i have fundamental scanners like everybody has on screener and in, even in fundamental i have different styles of investing scanner i have something for value i have something for momentum i have even i have something for capex or i have scanners where i just look at the what is the market cap and what is the total asset value and uh, many times i have found companies where the company the the liquidated value the net you know uh, net asset value is almost closer to the market or if you add the work in progress and capex which is not contributing sometimes 90% of the market cap or enterprise value so that is you know one level of filter now if you want to blend technical you have to ask what kind of technical you are playing so you know sometimes so uh, if i can take off one recent example where i was talking about webho global if people remember i was questioning the valuation and all of that now you cannot have webho global coming in a momentum indicator so you should have and it's a i believe there is a lot of you know uh, the way technical analysis hype is everybody thinks technical analysis is only about momentum investing but technical analysis is just a price volume buyer supplier demand supply equation you can apply it in a momentum you can apply at 52 week high you can apply it 52 week low so same way you need different kinds of technical indicators technical indicators which can say out of 4000 stocks which stocks are in high momentum but out of 4000 stocks which are the stocks uh, which are not at all in momentum but there is something interesting happening so if you would have studied some of the basics of technical analysis they call it four stage analysis stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 stage 4 so basically you have to be in stage 1 or stage 2 and the big money is made in stage 2 but the big investors they come somewhere in stage 1 which is when the accumulation goes on so do you have scanners which can help you to identify whether a stock is in stage 1 or stage 2 or 3 or 4 so on one side you have fundamental scanner so maybe a value investing fundamental scanner where the stock is you know very attractive but nobody is looking because there is too much of pessimism so that is what the fundamental scanner is telling but your technical scanner is telling the stock has come in the stage 1 where maybe the big guys have started accumulating and the price is not moving because they they can't accumulate in one go and especially in india in small cap mid cap you know पांच करोड़ का बाई करो आप ट्वेंटी परसेंट का अपर सर्किट लग जाता है तो दीज गाइज दे हैव टू यू नो बाई स्लोली दे हैव टू गिव द सिक्स मंथ टाइम टू यू नो एक्यूमलेट द टोटल क्वांटिटी दे वांट टू एक्यूमलेट बाई फ्रस्ट्रेटिंग दोज पीपल हु आर होल्डिंग एंड यू नो सेलिंग इन फ्रस्ट्रेशन सो यू हैव टू मैरी द राइट फंडामेंटल स्कैनर विथ राइट टेक्निकल स्कैनर सो फॉर मी इट इज नॉट अबाउट दिस और दैट और आई विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दिस साइड और आई विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दैट साइड फॉर मी इट इज अबाउट थिंक अबाउट from a investing and trading perspective which of these scanners are marrying to which scanner so maybe my stage 1 scanner is marrying to a value investing whereas my stage 2 scanner is marrying to a momentum uh, you know growth investing kind of thing where you know the earnings are there and the buyers have entered and you know the whole supply has been sucked and the stock is moving so think from those angle try to build scanners from both side and try to marry it try to find the logic why these two scanners should talk to each other so i will tell you webho global came in one of the fundamental scanner and it came in one of the technical scanner where i look for these kind of pessimism and again I, if i go back to that uh, share holding data you will see that the promoters were accumulating but i know it is a stage one stage one can go for even 6 month or it can go for even 2 years and if you read fundamentally you will know that you know the stock is having headwinds for 2 years so even if i am buying i am knowing that this stock will not may not do anything for next one or two years so that is where even being prepared and how are your expectations being set and do you want to just play a small game of you know that short term or downtrend may a consolidation may be jo 20 20 percent wala move aata rehta do you want to play that so that is how you should look at all these scanners and then of course everything comes with experience and that is how i am also learning so the more experience you get the more you know you look at your scanners for one year two year three year blend the more you know insights you get that you know this is how you blend it so my suggestion would be first identify what kind of investor you are what kind of time frame you have accordingly build your scanners you know and then try to look from both sides and see which of the ideas are matching why a company coming in this scanner fundamentally technical is moving in this way why it didn't move and you know keep you know keep refining it and that is how it works all right so 
so one question is on uh, upward leveraging so he is asking like how you go about up uh, if you identify a stock and if you find value from fundamental or technical side say so how do you go about <coughs> accumulating or upward leveraging what is your and what should be the ideal way to go about it okay or so there are two i may add in this uh, what should be the initial allocation percentage when you identify uh, any new stock okay okay so see first at least for me there are no hard and fast rules as such like let's say if there is a stock where i have very see there could be sector which i have studied from last 10 years and i might have seen two three cycles and i have a much deeper understanding in terms of understanding the sector in terms of looking at the cycle and there are sectors or companies which could be very new so all this allocation depends on lot of things what is the comfort level of the sector understanding of the sector understanding of the business and then comes ki where i am participating where i am entering so i try to avoid that you know stage you know the stage 3 which is typically where the stock tops out because that is the worst place to enter the worst of wealth destruction happens by entering at the top like what has happened in lots and lots of stocks like your uh, you know your hle glass quota if you talk of 7500 lot of diagnostic companies i don't know how many years it will take to get back to those prices so first how to avoid that so stage 3 then this whole downward trend when on every 10% fall because price gir gaya 20% बहुत लोगों को हम लोगों को लगता है कि स्टॉक अट्रैक्टिव हो गया है बट स्टिल इट इज नॉट अट्रैक्टिव सो द सेकंड इज एम आई एबल टू अवॉइड देयर नाउ व्हाट हैपेंस विथ मी इज आई एम नॉट अ टिपिकल मोमेंटम इन्वेस्टर हु गेट्स इन यू नो व्हेन द फुल मोमेंटम इज ऑन बिकॉज आई स्टिल हैव दैट फंडामेंटल साइड आई लाइक टू रीड कंपनीज आई लाइक टू बिल्ड कन्विक्शन आई लाइक टू बी प्रिपेयर एंड देन एज माई कन्विक्शन ग्रोज आई इंक्रीज माई पोजिशन इन पार्ट बट i have certain timelines that okay 6 to 12 months i'll keep buying like if i take example of ages uh, ages in december january there was no momentum and the stock was around 220 to 180 and that is where i started studying so if you see in last 6 months from no momentum slowly the momentum has come in the stock so my first objective is i should never ever buy at the top stage 3 and i should be able to avoid buying at stage 4 which is still the downtrend i am somebody who likes to enter in the mid of that accumulation band which may last from you know 6 month to 1 1 and 1/2 years but i am not perfect so i do mistakes so maybe i might buy in the last leg of downfall and let's say i might buy like i don't know camps if we have created a bottom at 2000 i don't know but i have a valuation range that okay i will buy between 20 fundamentally looks to me 2200 to 1600 could be a decent buy range and i will accumulate so i'll divide my money into three four parts that okay if is level pe itna lagaunga is level pe itna lagaunga then i look technically whether it has you know finished it stage 4 or it is in stage 1 and many times we don't get because you know in hindsight charts look easy but when the charts are being formed that is the most difficult part to interpret it so still i don't know if we have seen the worst in camps or maybe we will see one more round where we will get it down from 2000 to 1800 बट द आइडिया इज टू अवॉइड वो पहला तो अगर अवॉइड कर लिया ना तो पैसा अच्छा बन जाता है देन कम्स हाउ डू यू एलोकेट इट एंड वेर यू इंक्रीज इट सो अगेन डिपेंडिंग ऑन माई कन्विक्शन इफ दिस इज अजनेस विच आई अंडरस्टैंड इट वेल इफ दिस इज अक्टर आई अंडरस्टैंड वेल इफ आई सी सम इमीडिएट यू नो टेल विंड I can, uh, you know, rightly put a, you know, three four percent kind of position. But if I am not sure, like if you take a Vabo Global kind of stock where I see there could be potential headwinds for two years, maybe I will start with a one percent kind of position, and then over a period of one year, I will slowly build that position. Because you would have seen market me, four years ka return, four months me aata hai, and you should. The key is you have to know that you have to be prepared for you know two years of pain. So setting expectation is very very important. so depending on you know how fast or how slow tailwinds will be what is my expectation is it to make money in one year or to make money in three year what the charts are telling is it still not sure about whether we have finished the downtrend or we are in the accumulation phase or the momentum phase has started taking all of this into consideration i try to you know buy but i am not somebody who will buy everything in one go i like to you know divide into parts and buy सो एक्म अब स्टेज वन में आप कब कब बाई करते हो सो इफ यू सी टिपिकली स्टेज वन 
द स्टॉक विल मूव इन अ रेंज फर्स्ट इट विल स्टॉप फॉलोइंग जो बॉटम बन गया वो बन गया वो जब जब वहां पे आता है दैट बिग बायर विल कम एंड बाय सो वंस यू सी अ स्टॉक शोइंग वन और टू साइंस यू विल सी लाइक इफ आई कैन रिमेंबर टू इयर्स बैक दैट इज व्हाट हैपेंड इन ग्रीन प्लाई ग्रीन प्लाई मेड अ बॉटम अराउंड 70 80 रुपीस एंड देन यू सॉ टू थ्री टाइम्स यू नो द सेम प्राइस गेव सपोर्ट इफ आई टॉक ऑफ लॉरस लैब्स गोइंग थ्री इयर्स बैक यू विल सी द सेम प्राइस रेंज गुड 20% बैंड द स्टॉक वाज देयर फॉर 6 7 मंथ्स so one is you try to buy in the lower range whenever it comes by dividing money into two three parts and then six month one year you know you have build your position decently and then the if your fundamental conviction story plays out then you go and you make money you know when the momentum comes but if you are somebody who is just playing momentum then of course you will never enter till you know it is below certain moving average which we call golden cross over and all so then of course you are entering there but then if you have to add your positions then you have to add your position because you are a trader so you have to add your positions where your risk reward is most favorable so when i talk of fundamental i said my valuation band is 1600 to 2200 so i'm looking for a margin of safety ki theek hai 1900 pe to paisa nahi dubega now if i am entering as a pure trader you know in momentum as a momentum trader my objective is risk reward so there are certain specific price band and again depending on the time horizon like if you are playing on a two year kind of horizon you better look at weekly charts i try to accumulate stocks around 13 week to 20 week uh, whenever it touches because most of the times until less the stock is in super uptrend like if you have a stock like rajratan you will see it didn't even break 20 day moving average for a long time but if your stock is in normal kind of trend uh, you will see the stock will get a support around 13 week to 20 week moving average maybe two times three times in a year and that is where i would like to buy because वहां पे मेरा स्टॉप लॉस रहता है एंड देन द स्टॉप लॉस एज अ ट्रेडर इज थ्री फोर परसेंट का गिरा तो फिर आई विल एक्सिट सो डिपेंडिंग ऑन ऑल ऑफ दीज यू नो योर स्टाइल योर इन्वेस्टमेंट स्टाइल वेर यू आर बाइंग व्हाट इज योर थेसेस व्हाट इज योर टाइम पीरियड आर यू अ टेक्नो फंड गाई आर यू प्योर ट्रेडर आर यू डू वैल्यू बाइंग एट द बॉटम आर यू डूइंग मोमेंटम बाइंग अकॉर्डिंगली यू नीड टू टेक अ कॉल की कहाँ पे इस तरीके से एक्यूमुलेट करना है बट दीज आर द टू वेज आई डू एज आई साइड सबसे पहले तो स्टेज वन में आप नीचे नीचे लो जब सपोर्ट बनता है और अगर आप मोमेंटम खेल रहे हो तो अगर सुपर मोमेंटम स्टॉक है देन यू लुक फॉर यूजुअली आई गो लॉट बाय मूविंग एवरेजेस बिकॉज दैट इज वेयर माय एक्सपीरियंस हैज बीन सो 13 वीक टू 20 वीक इज द काइंड ऑफ प्लेस वेयर आई यू नो आई लाइक टू एक्यूमुलेट व्हाइल बाइंग थिंग्स राइट सर सो विजय यू कैन अनम्यूट एंड आस्क योर क्वेश्चन यस गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन गुड इवनिंग प्रिंस सर वाजपेयी जी सौरभ जी तो माय क्वेश्चन इज विल इट्स नॉट ऑन एनी स्टॉक्स और एनी view regarding markets uh, but it's regarding valuations well if you remember uh, jab covid crash hua tha tab bhi nifty ka pe 2021 tha and now it's also 2021 jo bhi hai aur uh, in that time our eps earning per share was around 420 430 440 something you know aur ab ab earning per share double hai और तब निफ्टी था बारह बारह हजार मतलब अगर वो के, वो कैलकुलेशन लगाए तो अब तो निफ्टी को पच्चीस हजार होना चाहिए था या चौबीस हजार होना चाहिए था वट सो एवर तो एंड इफ यू स्टिल ट्रैकिंग इट आई गेस वी आर द मोस्ट एक्सपेंसिव मार्केट इन द वर्ल्ड द मोस्ट एक्सपेंसिव राइट नाउ एंड अवर अर्निंग्स आर सिग्निफिकेंटली कट फॉर एफ वाई टू थ्री एंड एफ वाई टू फोर सिग्निफिकेंटली and do you think we are doing for a reality check as well as as far as this valuations are concerned market valuations are concerned yeah so it's a combination of everything and ultimately you know in long run it is all about valuation in short run the liquidity the sentiment and all comes so when you look at the 10 year 15 year of data the overall cagr of any index and the eps performance of that index both of them maybe by 2 3% they will mismatch but mostly they will match and uh, there is a beautiful book by late parag parik sir where he did lot of this analysis right from 1990s to 2013 14 you know till uh, you know he was there and you will see and even if you extend that analysis you will see the problem comes is we look at these numbers you know as sacrosanct and we just take a number we don't try to put the effort Uh, now the problem with covid is covid is a outlier event and you know a lot of businesses one quarter two quarter they didn't perform there was no business i mean it's not like those businesses would have died it's just that no no dhanda happened for three you know three months six months so there there was lot of data treatment outlier reduction normalization which needed to happen and actually in september and december i made two videos 
on is nifty pe really 41 because that time i remember the nifty pe if you see the nsc site that was you know 41 and when you would have done a lot of that analysis you would have realized that you know it was not actually 41 but it was much lesser that is one second this whole abhi nse is also taking consolidated but that time nse used to take standalone versus consolidated the third thing is uh, you know there were a lot of commodity companies which are making losses there are a lot of psu banks which are making losses now when you look at nifty and you look at these four or five companies the contribution of losses might be subs it was subsiding you know profit by a great extent the fourth point is the corporate profit margins. If you look at those times in 2019 and all, we were at one of the lowest corporate profit margin. When we peaked in 2007, the corporate profit margin was almost around 7%. And we have come down to almost 2.5%. So the reversion to mean. So P is just a metric which is getting driven by so many factors, you know, the market cap and the EPS. So a lot of, I believe a lot of data treatment is required to, you know, normalize, especially in an event like COVID when, you know, two quarters, you don't have any business happening and all of that. There is a lot of data normalization required. So maybe if you watch that video, you will get a sense that what all activities were done to, as per me, to say, I feel what is the right P. And then, of course, the growth came, the EPS growth came because of whatever reasons, because your IT was performing, because, you know, your costs went down, because nobody was traveling, your SGA cost got, you know, saved, which is, again, not a sustainable situation, because those margins have to go down. And that is why the ID companies stopped up. So a lot of these things needs to be factored. Right now, if you look at the uh, Nifty P, I think it was when we were at uh, 15, 15,500, 16,000 levels. We touched somewhere around, I think, 20, if I am not wrong. Yeah, 18, 19. Now the question is, where is the future direction? Now there are two things. We need to break what is in this whole. And many times I feel uh, we should better take an index, which is more like, uh, you know, we have to first normalize the index. So on one side, there are debates that, you know, you have very good commodity profit, which will not repeat. But the other side of debate is you have banks who have not performed for four years. So there is equal debate on the both sides. The way I look at it is, uh, and again, I tweeted some time back, you have to look at, we have to look at portfolios or indexes in terms of domestic versus export because there is pain, there could be pain in US, in Europe and, you know, globally, but the dom domestic economy so far, it has been doing well. So now we need to see how much of Nifty portfolio is exposed to that. And in that, Maybe there could be businesses, uh, you know, which could still do well despite of global slowdown. Like a recession came in 2008. But if you look at IT growth rate, I don't think IT growth rate suffered in 2008 because uh, maybe it was a necessity or maybe, you know, to save costs, giving business to outsourcing nation, that is the only possibility. I don't know, but it didn't suffer. Or a pharma, which is, you know, already pharma exports in US anyway, they are commoditized. So if people need medicine, but maybe chemical businesses or maybe businesses where people are willing to make, you know, uh, cancel their purchase that could get impacted. So I believe that is how we have to look at Nifty and rather than looking at Nifty, I'm more comfortable buying companies which are, which have, you know, lesser exposure to exports and more uh, domestic consumption uh, rather than, you know, uh, plainly looking at Nifty. But even if we look at Nifty, of course, we are not in the most attractive zone because this 20% Kamu has come, you know, very fast. I don't take any kind of future estimates because we never know. Yaar. We say that, you know, we will do well. Abhi, everybody is telling. And in 2008, also, we heard similar stories that we are globally decoupled. But when some global phenomenon happens, nobody knows. So rather when, than predicting when whether it will go... We fell more than US. Yeah, exactly. So I'm not getting into predictions. Means. Yeah, the best way we can save ourselves is having a better margin of safety. So the best is whenever the margin of safety reduces, go more in cash. And whenever the margin of safety increases, invest more. That is how we will see. But I don't think we are anywhere in any kind of bubble zone. Maybe a 10-15% per correction. We again come back to the same 18-19-20 band. Uh, because if we look in last 12 months, the EPS has grown. It has grown decent. Uh, future, let's see how it happens. And again... Market will be the biggest indicator. Price is the biggest indicator. And again, that is why I believe in the power of, you know, all this technical analysis rather than me trying to predict that, uh, you know, next quarter or next year, how much EPS Nifty can do. But uh, you may choose not to answer this question. But right now, do you Stop. think we are overvalued or, you know, 
like you may choose not to answer because you know it's your business so, now what do you think sir, about the position i can take few of the points uh, which uh, vijay asked yes yes please Hello? sir please sir yeah yes, go ahead go ahead vijay ek cheez hai what happened is last year na nifty uh, computation of eps has changed somewhere in may june ठीक है उससे पहले हम लोग निफ्टी में ना जो ईपीएस कैलकुलेट करते थे दैट वाज ऑन स्टैंड अलोन फ्रॉम समवेयर अराउंड मे जून 2021 वी हैव मूव टू कंसोलिडेटेड ईपीएस देयर वुड बी एन आर्टिकल ऑन मनी कंट्रोल इफ यू सर्च यू विल फाइंड दैट आर्टिकल समवेयर अराउंड देयर वर लॉट ऑफ देयर वर लॉट ऑफ आउटलायर थिंग्स इन निफ्टी एंड दैट इज व्हाई आई वुड से यू गो एंड वॉच दैट YouTube वीडियो आई हैव गोन थ्रू ईच एंड स्टेप बाय स्टेप प्रोसेस ऑफ how we arrive from 41 to right p of course that's a one year old video but that will cover all these factors including the stand alone consolidated and all <coughs> actually we are discussing here uh, <coughs> for investment point of view and not uh, discussing on nifty valuation ah uh, so please sir, continue our please. Uh, our so thank you for your question so vijay so and the same direction right तो वाजपेयी जी एनी क्वेश्चन ऑन टेक्निकल साइड यू क्लोजली ट्रैक टेक्निकल सो एनी क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम सौरभ अब जैसे सौरभ जी अभी आपने ग्रीन प्लाई का आपने मेंशन किया तो इसके संबंध में आप बताएंगे कि क्या ये एक्यूमुलेशन फेजिस का चल रहा है या डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन चल रहा है क्योंकि तो ये पिछले एक साल से लगभग इसी रेट के दायरे में वन सेवेंटी के बीच में चल रहा है और रिजल्ट कम्पेटिवली कुछ ना कुछ इसके इम्प्रूव ही हुए हैं तो इसके डाटा को देखते हुए आप इसको कैसे एनालाइज कर रहे हैं कंपनी यू टॉकिंग अबाउट ग्रीन प्लाई ग्रीन प्लाई अभी आपने मेंशन किया था बीच में ग्रीन प्लाई ओके ओके फ्रैंकली सी द वे आई वर्क इज एंड आई विल टेल यू किसी के लिए भी तीन चार हजार कंपनी क्लोजली ट्रैक कर पाना बहुत मुश्किल है द वे आई वर्क इज जो कंपनीज मेरे स्कैनर में आती है वहां से मेरा काम शुरू होता है तो एक तो ग्रीन प्लाई मेरे स्कैनर में कभी आया नहीं है बट आई वॉज इन्वेस्टेड इन दिस कंपनी सो कभी कभी मैं फंडामेंटली देखता रहता हूँ माई सेंस इज इट वॉज अ प्लाईवुड इट इट इज अ प्लाईवुड कंपनी बट आई थिंक उनका कुछ एक्सपेंशन आ रहा है जो आई थिंक वो भी एम डी एफ में कर रहे हैं एंड आई डोंट नो इफ देर आर एनी काइंड ऑफ बिकॉज ग्रीन प्लाई और ग्रीन पैनल का डीमर्जर हुआ था आई डोंट नो इफ देर इज सम काइंड ऑफ एग्रीमेंट दैट वन ईयर दे कैन डू दिस एंड दैट बट सम एक्सपेंशन इज कमिंग चार्ट आई एम नॉट लुक इन डिटेल बिकॉज Uh, you know the charts need to come in my scanner so you don't go and look for charts the chart should come in your scanner and then you see so it will be difficult for me to say but i believe uh, things have few things have changed in green ply when i was invested in at so one aapko thodi family history dekhni padegi wo wo main bahut zyada nahi bolna chahta but uh, they got a new ceo why they got a new ceo despite of you know sun being there and if you read the last year annual report there was a focus on we are going to reduce cost we are going to become more efficient and all of that and to a certain extent they have done and all that happened and that is why this whole price moved from you know 80 to whatever 230 240 and then you know it has come down and uh, you know it's uh, it's staying there mereko chart pe zyada nahi idea hai because maine chart dekha nahi hai but some expansion is coming valuations have you know cooled off little bit but one more thing which we need to factor in these kind of businesses is uh something which happened in 2017 18 and you know we all get excited by capex capex aa raha hai capex aa raha hai we have to also see the supply of the capex uh, so what happened in 2017 there was a over supply of mdf so there was a reason why green panel went down from you know 70 rupee to 26 rupee action uh, green panel <coughs> century ply sab ka bhar bhar ke capex aa gaya and there was a over supply and there was a margin cut so again we need to see because you know the whole mdf and you know all of this is very popular i think we need to again see how much of capex is coming from the industry side combine all of that data and then take a call you know if there this is a genuine growth based capex which will just cover up the expected growth or you know there will be over supply all of that price maine dekha nahi hai to main zyada kuch bol nahi paunga charts ka maine is company ka isliye naam diya ki kyunki aapne starting mein na jitne parameters bataye the jaise aapne kaha tha uski holdings ko bhi dekhna chahiye to holding ke point of view se bhi इसमें एफ ने और डी ने कंटिन्यूस होल्डिंग बढ़ाई है और मायरे एसेट मैनेजमेंट ने लास्ट ईयर मई जून में इसमें एट ए टाइम शायद फाइव या सिक्स परसेंट का स्टेक लिया था और उसके बाद से वो कंटिन्यूस उसमें अपने स्टेक को थोड़ा थोड़ा करके बढ़ा रहे हैं पब्लिक की होल्डिंग कम चूंकि आपने जो पॉइंट दिए थे वो सब इसमें कवर हो रहे थे इसलिए हमने सोचा की शायद ये एक एग्जाम्पल बन सकता है क्या हमारे जो ऑडियंस है उनको देखने के लिए की इस प्रकार की जब चीजें एक साथ कई स्टॉक में मिलती हूँ तो मैं मतलब हम लोग आइडेंटिफाई कर सकते हैं फाइव इन्वेस्टमेंट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से 
क्योंकि इसमें एकुमुलेशन एफ और डी का बढ़ा है और पब्लिक का रिड्यूस हुआ जैसा आपने बताया कैपेस की बात भी यहाँ लास्ट ईयर हुई थी अभी वो आ पाया कि नहीं आ पाया ये भी नहीं क्लियर हो पाया बट सेल में थोड़ी बहुत इनकी इंक्रीज हुई है प्रॉफिट मार्जिन भी इम्प्रूव हो रहा है तो जिस प्रकार से आपने जो पॉइंट्स बताया था मैं उन पॉइंट पर और कंसाइडेशन भी एक साल से चल रहा मतलब इतनी ज्यादा गिरावट भी हुई बावन भी कर लो भी बना फिर भी इसने अपने पिछले साल के लो को नहीं फ्लिप किया वन सिक्सटी के लो को नहीं फ्लिप किया इस परपज से मैंने कहा था खैर आपके उस पर नहीं है तो कोई बात नहीं थैंक यू एक क्वेश्चन इज लाइक इंस्टीट्यूशनल एकोमोलेशन में स्टेज वन को हाउ वन शुड लुक अबाउट इट ये दिस क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम डेफ फ्रॉक्स या प्रिंस कैन यू इलेबोरेट या फॉर इंस्टीट्यूशनल एक्यूमुलेशन स्टेज वन हाउ वन शुड लुक एट इट आई मीन हाउ सो सी व्हेन इंस्टीट्यूशंस बाय यूजुअली यू नो you will see on your volume candles and your typical you know stage one is you know when the price moves up and again if you read any technical analysis book basically jo up move hota hai wo acche volumes pe aata hai aur jab correction hota hai then you will see the corrections are with you know lower volume but that doesn't mean in every stock that this will happen it also depends you know which kind of institutional investor is there and all of that like if i remember uh, thyro care uh thyro care the kind of institutional investors who were there who were accumulating thyro care between 450 to 550 they frustrated uh, you know investors big time but typically you will expect a good volume on certain days uh, whenever institutional buy will happen you have to look at the delivery volume uh, many times you will get in bulk deal data you know even in green ply i think when that whole big move came it was plutus who was buying around 75 you know 85 rupees and then every quarter you need to you know keep tracking the data you know who is buying who is selling and all of that so when you combine the price volume data you combine the delivery data uh, see the big volume days you know what has happened how was the delivery on big volume days then at the end of the quarter you go back with the data pattern change and you see you know who has increased who has reduced you know this is how you know you get your sense all right so lnpr capital you can unmute and ask your question yeah, thank you so uh, shuru bhai uh, what's your view on the auto index actually auto index chart just broke out after 5 years and i already see few people writing over it so i want to know your view on yaar main to 6 mahine se view de raha hu i wrote first blog in january i did a, a youtube webinar in april and then i did one more webinar few months back so my view is we should always start matlab again being a fund investor i like to watch in late when you know there is some bit of pessimism and actually i have spoken enough here it's a two three year cycle and the cycle is different for two wheeler than four wheeler than cv you we cannot say all the three segments behave the same cycle because the triggers of the cycles are different cv i think already we had a you know a good cycle playing out so do se teen saal rehta hai alag alag ye teeno ka and that is the whole game so it's a cyclic sector and we have to enter and we have to exit two wheeler i think still you know we have not even started because still we were in de- degrowth phase i think july august is the indication that slowly we are coming pvcv already the cycle reversed cv i think we have crossed the middle period because when you look from 2006 to 2021 data uh, you have two three good years and then you have one or two bad years that is how it has played and i think covid because of covid this uh, cycle which peaked in 2018 it got elongated by two more years so usually ek se do saal ka cycle hota hai to char saal ka ho gaya hai ab uske karan kya hua hai ki sare numbers at least in two wheeler and pv the numbers have gone four years five years back so still there is a you know distance to be covered but i believe my sense is cv might peak out first and uh, two wheeler might be late to peak out but we have to take each of these uh, you know uh, we have to consider each of them differently also if you look at the penetration of two wheeler versus pv it's very very different so there is a reason why your two wheeler companies get up oem companies why they get up pv of you know 12 13 and why your four wheeler companies get a higher pe because uh, you know don't go by the uh, you know per capita penetration i mean ek ghar mein panch aadmi hai to har aadmi motorcycle nahi khareedega so you have to look at household wise and you, if you look household wise you know it's more of a replacement demand i feel else there is a, a household basis 70 80 percent penetration is there but if you go for car even household wise the penetration is not more than 20 so keeping cycle aside the structural all of these things needs to be taken into care and then one needs to you know divide into 
uh, CV differently, PV differently, similar differently, and then you know play it accordingly. But I believe we have crossed the mid path. One year, two year, or let's see. I don't know. I mean, because we have gone five years back. So if India is to do well and if everything is good, then people will buy cars. Two wheeler, then the replacement demand will be PV. So it will happen. So let's see how does this go. I think we are somewhere in the middle. We have crossed the middle in commercial. Two wheeler, I think we are starting, and PV we might be close to middle. That is how I would say. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, sort of. Uh, one more additional question on this two wheeler side. Say if we stack uh, three players, uh, Bajaj, Hero, and Aisha. Hero is entry level. Bajaj would be at mid level. Aisha would be at the top level. Uh, taking from the comment you made, should we expect that the penetration, at least for the entry level bike, is very much saturated in India? So, if Hero needs to scale up, they need to scale up in uh, a higher segment. What Bajaj did? Bajaj left the entry segment bike uh, somewhere they vacated this year, I guess. So, Hero also ne might need to do something because they're right right now their uh, maximum of the sale is that 125 cc and less. So, any view on that side? Since if we are stacking, uh... so my view is there are three, four ways we have to dissect this data. Every company first their product portfolio in terms of the price band, who is playing where, entry, mid, premium. Second, in terms of domestic versus export. So these are ways we have to dissect. And third, who is prepared in terms of the disruption of EV versus non-EV. And fourth is who is having a motorcycle portfolio versus a scooter portfolio. and then you need to there are a lot of things which are happening so when you look at tv you will see that you know uh, basically your scooter segment is getting disrupted and that you know the whole 60000 to 1 lakh price band that is getting disrupted because of your fema 2 and all you know that price band has become supportive for the ev scooter it makes from total cost of ownership it makes sense so there are companies and then when any kind of you know these kind of uh, you know issues the economic crisis issues happens the bottom of the pyramid that gets hit first and that is why you know your entry level people they uh, pricing band they suffer first so you have to think all these oems from these perspective so if you think from these perspective bajaj is first it's basically now a export company so the domestic market share they have kept on losing from last 30 years hero uh, you know they have not been able to scale up as you said in the premium segment and entry segment is going to get disrupted by uh, e scooters which is happening like you know from 6 month back 10 15000 scooter per month now we are selling 50 60000 scooter per month so how well hero is prepared or not they are yet to launch we have to see so we have to see first who is least disrupted whose most risks are getting triggered whose least risks are getting triggered so that way if you see i share already they have gone through a down down phase where their domestic numbers have come down from 8 lakhs to 6 lakh but at least you know they are not getting disrupted by the ev cycle and in last 3 4 years they have tried to build a strong international business which they are trying to build so it looks like that will be least impacted the second is bajaj because bajaj has very good share from export market now if they lose market share because tvs is gaining higher market share in export compared to bajaj so still bajaj has to fight but on a portfolio basis from this whole ev disruption they are also uh, lesser uh, disrupted because bulk of their business is get coming from export and until less those countries start talking about ev that portfolio looks relatively safe or uh, tvs is there everywhere so tvs what they have done in last 5 10 years they have built portfolios in every segment right from your moped to you know the sports bike to now they have come with iqube and all Uh, so in terms of profitability tvs ka jo uh, you know pool hai little bit of uh, maybe 10 15% of the portfolio will get impacted and hero being in entry segment uh, you know it is worst impacted so that is how you know we have to see these four companies and then see how how they are doing in terms of who is winning so like if you see the numbers which are coming for bajaj chetak so so far in the you know the existing oems bajaj has launched and tvs has launched So far, TBS numbers looks better than Chetak, but let's see. And Hero is yet to, you know, take it bikes to the mark, bike to the market, and that is what is getting reflected in the price. Also, if you see, that is why your TBS and iShare has done well, whereas Bajaj and Hero has not done that much well. All right, Kumar. So one question is on US market. So one person, Dins Patel, he is asking, uh, please put some light on investment in US market currently. 
to diversify the one's portfolio so what's your views on that and we are, we are like yeah. uh, when our when we see our market is resilient we often say that our market is decoupled from us or other uh, global markets so what's your view on that also my viewers nobody knows they are people say and when it happens it happens uh, i mean i heard the same thing in 2008 and then we all know what happened see the thing is in long run i believe we will always do good but short run mein kya hota hai nobody knows even if you see covid all that happened in one month and same price upar chala gaya and that happened because everybody was so panic that if you look at uh, money flow data like what is the total if i say for all the 500 companies in nifty 500 what is the total rupees crore of value traded today if nobody is buying if some people are selling still you will get a down you know lower circuit so it depends lot on sentiment in short term so long run sab theek rahega but in short run if you know us mein europe mein har jagah problem aa raha hai and even in india people get panicked and if nobody buys you will again get lower circuit so where prices will go that is one thing but i believe from long term we are good but uh, we need to see company by company we need to see export portfolios but it doesn't mean that prices may not fall prices can you know fall 20% if there is some kind of global impact and the sentiment goes negative because sentiment drives the money flow and uh, you know when the big guys they feel okay it is attractive they come back to buy even on you know few lakh rupee of trade you will see upper circuit being made uh, now coming to us market so mere ko us market ka bahut zyada idea nahi hai and i myself beyond index investing i have not you know gone further and <coughs> on 25th i shared one tweet that uh, you know it's a, it is at a very decisive level and why i did that so when you take monthly charts uh, if you take 50 years of nasdaq chart and i have spoken about a level called rsi 50 level again there was a tweet that this rsi 50 level is very important uh, what i have seen and you can go and you can see even this is there for nasdaq chart no bull market no momentum investing happens at a monthly rsi below 50 if the momentum investing you know if the big run up momentum has to come it always comes at this monthly rsi above 50 and many times when it goes below 50 and then prices try to go up the same 50 level acts as a resistance and what i noticed on 25th the same 50 level nasdaq got a resistance and then you know it fell which means it is not able to cross 50 so ye jo move aaya tha na 18 whatever 15% gain that move got you know challenged at that 50 level and even the price you will see certain moving averages that is happening so still i don't see that us market i mean to make any kind of aggressive bet in us market i would like to see that level go above 50 uh, because fundamentally i don't think i have enough idea so i'll better go with you know my system which is telling that you know be cautious in that market until as fundamentals become so attractive that you know you are getting all the uh, nasdaq at a you know maybe at a valuation of you know 16 17 x then that's a different call then you don't know what will happen but you feel there is enough margin of safety and you keep buying so right now i don't see the technicals also in favor and i don't have that much of visibility on fundamentals to say it is super attractive so i am not doing anything i have a 2 3% kind of position in the index fund which i continue to hold that's it all right sorok so anirudh you can unmute and ask your question please a uh, good evening sir and uh, thank you for uh, allowing me to have see my question so my question is uh, how do you pyramid a position or exit a position citing uh, uh, whatever principles you follow either funda or technical so i do want a guidance on how to pyramid suppose you, you said initially we already replied that uh, so there are two ways i do it uh, i took a example of uh, you know stage 1 and stage 2 if i am doing a fundamental investing so maybe if you see the recording you'll find the answer okay sir okay thank you sir thank you anirudh so one more question uh, is uh, yeah so yeah the question is from anant he is asking does suru ignore uh, stock price falling below crucial moving averages when the whole market is crashing or if a stock has good fundamentals but is falling due to temporary issues so will he buy in such situations so see uh uh one thing is whether the index is falling below moving average and the other thing is where a particular stock is falling below moving average 
so is the call on index broader market or second is is the call on the stock and the third is when it is falling is it falling after a big move like let's say if we have a stock like your iex and all typically which you know was in a very good momentum and then it is falling so many times you don't need to wait for that uh, moving averages to be broken because moving average is a lag indicator and you know the longer the moving average you take the more will be the lag and the late will be your decisions and many times you know uh, that is not the only way you take a call on exit specifically when it comes to stock level exits uh, if you are getting a high volume sell off or if you are getting lot of weakness which i spoke about in charts like irctc which are exhaustion move so you don't need to wait for moving average but let us say uh, you know we are talking about the index or the market then of course moving averages and all they are important and at least even from a long term investing perspective uh, you know that 200 day moving average that's a sacrosanct number but moving average is not the only thing i take again i have a system uh, there are a few more indicators i have a system built around uh, uh, price volume moving average rsi lot of these things but there are certain quants things also like i shared with you percentage of companies which are above 200 day moving average percentage of companies which are above or below 50 day moving average so everybody tries to simplify but my analysis says it's not that 100% simple that you can just take one metric but still those metrics save you from catastrophic events so that way yes but it's not like i will take a position back when the stocks will go above that moving average that is where i will disagree because i have a value investing mindset also which says ki jo cheez jitna niche agar market itna niche ja raha hai to attractive ho raha hai it just that you have to avoid that panic situation where you know any fall can happen but again if you look at the bottoming out bottoming out is a different phenomenon in bottoming out you don't moving average is for momentum so i am not waiting for momentum let's say when uh, you know the crash happens or a stock falls like let's say if i can talk of uh, you know a, a company like ncl industries which i spoke in one of the top 5 small cap ideas i am exploring i am not waiting for momentum to come there because i feel there is a value and i can see there is a accum uh, this is my belief that the chart is accumulating and again whatever we are speaking the thing is a recommendation uh, but i can if i find value and if i can find accumulation happening i am willing to wait for 2 years and i am willing to buy in parts and uh, i will let the momentum come whenever it comes so moving averages and all it is good for somebody who wants to play only when there is momentum in the market but if somebody who wants to buy value need not to be the index need not to be you know above moving average because then how will you do the value hunting how will you buy the panic so there are different ways even in technical there are different ways of doing that but that doesn't happen you know uh, only from moving average but yes from the top moving average getting broken it is a warning sign at the index level but for bottom fishing and for value investing we shouldn't we should not think of moving average we should have more uh, you know more concrete uh, conviction over the valuation attractiveness and all of that uh, right sir so sir uh, two questions at one go first of all i would request like for a beginner or may a mid level or purely who is into trading so how they can benefit from your courses which you are offering at scientific investing so our, our audience uh, would love to know about that and after that uh, few investable spaces apart from auto and banking you have been vocal about uh, from last uh, 6 12 months so any new investable spaces you find value uh, emerging so these are two questions yeah uh sure uh, so first on the courses side so it's a reflection of what i do and what i have learned so if you see you know the way i have structured it first you have courses so like a fundamental analysis course or a technical analysis course then comes the strategy whether it you want to go with a techno funda strategy or blending fundamental or technical or you want to build your own algorithms so that is what i call a learning track so we have three learning tracks uh, fundtech which is a techno funda so it has four courses fundamental technical techno funda strategy and there is a data analysis course or there is another track called quantech which is if somebody wants to build algorithms like i will discuss one person has asked can you help me to develop a screen for momentum using rsi so how do we screen how do we back test how do we try 550 different things how do we know whether it will it has worked for last 20 years or not what was the best year what was the worst year how can i convert some of my chart patterns into a mathematical algorithms so we do that in quantech which is for more kind of you know uh, process driven 
नॉट डिस्क्रिप्शनरी काइंड ऑफ डिसीजन मेकिंग वेर वी कवर टेक्निकल एनालिसिस पाइथन सम क्वांट्स एल्गोरिथमिक स्ट्रेटजीज एंड ऑल सो दीज आर काइंड ऑफ लर्निंग ट्रैक्स और कोर्सेज वी हैव एंड देन वी हैव अ प्रैक्टिशनर मेंबरशिप वेयर वॉट एवर्स वी आर स्टडिंग लर्निंग कोर्स एनालिसिस सेक्टर एनालिसिस वेबिनार एल्गोरिथम टेक्निकल एनालिसिस we cover everything which is the annual membership so these are some of the offerings and it is totally aligned with how i have been learning you know all these different 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 skill sets captured there now coming to uh, what is attractive so from a sector perspective <coughs> see in march when the market uh, you know created all this correction again i had shared a tweet and a 15 minute video how do you find strength in the market and there were three four things which came unfortunately banking didn't come there and it was my conviction that i stuck to banking and simple reason it didn't come because fii's were selling last one year till june july whatever fii selling has happened 50% of the fii which is the worst selling in last two decades has happened in banks and for them it's okay because you know fii is where the first one to realize the potential of banks in india and they have you know they have, they have gone through a 25 year ride so if you are you know if they are offloading 20% of that it doesn't matter anything but then you know it creates a pricing pressure and that might be one reason why you know banks didn't do well and once the fii selling stopped then you see bank the whole bank nifty has gone from you know 332 to 400 so it was more my fundamental conviction that though banks didn't come in my you know a scanner which tells the find the strength in the market i still stuck to banks i think cub was the only stock which came and i had studied uh, still but Uh, autos were there and auto fit in my fundamental also capital goods was there but i didn't do any work any funda study in capital goods so i take capital goods more as a trade because i don't know when it will top out defense was another sector which came there but again i took whatever small positions i built i took it as a trade so i still i am heavily invested only in auto and in banks Uh, capital goods defense i am playing more as a trade because i have not done lot of fundamental study but there are certain bottom up approaches where i am finding certain stocks which are heavily beaten down they may not do well immediately but i am least bothered uh, so i am not building a 5 6% position i am building like a 1% position and the idea is whenever you get a 3 4% kind of fall you keep accumulating uh, certain companies again those five companies which i you know which i uh, showed in that video Uh, which covered uh, ultra marine was there uh, i think one of the mutual funds was there uh, one of the fmcg companies were there so these are the companies i look for and i am trying to build positions slowly uh, so yeah apart from this i don't find lot of value right now in any sector there could be value which i am not able to evaluate or there is a momentum which you know i will refrain to calling from value because i don't know how to find value in that uh banks i think still we have a good 2 uh, 3 years runway i think we are just starting in banks auto i think we are you know we had that initial phase we might be somewhere in the middle so these are the sectors but right now these are the sectors uh, i don't find lot of value anywhere apart from you know bottom up bottom up opportunities uh, right sarab so accidental engineer you can unmute and ask your question yeah हेलो प्रिंस हाय सौरभ एम आई ऑडियोबल मेरा क्वेश्चन ये बारे में सपोज एक्स वाई जेड कंपनी है और उसमें अच्छा सा कैपेक्स अनाउंस हुआ था देन कैपेक्स इम्प्लीमेंट भी हुआ अच्छे से एंड देन बट मैनेजमेंट अग्रेसिवली अनाउंस करते गया है कि आवर रेवेन्यूज विल ग्रो एंड वो मार्केट में फैक्टर भी हो गया है तो ये कंडीशन में अगर फंडामेंटल अगर हमें दिख रहा है कि रेवेन्यू तो बढ़ने वाला है तो मतलब कैसे सोचना चाहिए ये सिनारी में अगर कोई ऐसे कोई बेसिक इन्वेस्टर है अगर फंडामेंटल देख के सोच रहा है रेवेन्यू भी बढ़ने वाला है कैपेक्स भी हुआ है बट मार्केट ने फैक्टर भी कर लिया है गैस तो ये हाउ टू रियक्ट इन सच सिचुएशन कैन यू प्लीज गाइड लिटिल बिट ऑन दिस so my view is see it will depend business to business and usually in bull market these things become very talked about capex and all uh because in bull market even on you know q1 and q3 results companies go up because nobody bothers about balance sheet but uh, again it comes to what is your investment psyche are you looking for good companies are you looking for quality companies are you looking for small cap investing or are you looking to leverage that capex announcement as a sentiment indicator in a raging bull market where on these kind of 
यू नो न्यूज थिंग्स विल गो अप इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू से कि क्या फैक्टर हो गया क्या फैक्टर नहीं हुआ है वो सब हाइंड में ही पता चलता है What I do is see. Uh, so, uh, if your view is very short term, then of course you don't even look at you know much of fundamental. You look at the price and you know the chart and the screen. But given you are asking more from a fundamental perspective, my answer would be even before capex, look at the balance sheet and the cash flow. Uh, you know, is this company which just want to grow out of capex, or are they you know respecting the you know return ratios and all? uh whether if it has been factored i think all of that will depend lot of things here many times capex comes and still prices don't move because there is a over supply like i spoke about what happened to plywood industry in 2017 or in you know uh, the tire industry lot of you know supply came or it could differ by businesses there could be businesses where the impact of capex plays in a very different time frame cycle like if i can take example of apollo hospital in a hospital business a hospital business first it takes 2 3 years for that capex to deploy and then when the hospitals reach around 65% kind of capacity utilization then they do a break even and then you will see a you know from a loss to a very good profit so if you go and if you read apollo hospital con calls when a big 3000 crore capex was happening in 2018 19 everybody was frustrated so today is a market when on capex news at least not today but maybe one year back on capex news companies go up but then there was a market uh, in 2018 when on capex news all the analysts were frustrated why because company took a debt for that capex and that debt had a big interest rate it had a big depreciation so your pnl is looking very bad and your revenue contribution is not coming and then you need to run the hospital for 2 3 years to reach the 65% utilization and then of course you need to analyze if in that city everybody was coming with a big uh, you know capex or not so you need to identify all these factors and then take a call ki ye capex pehle acha capex hai ya kharab capex hai and then you decide ki us capex ke basis pe you know investing ka kya karna hai anubhav you can go next uh, unmute and ask a question good evening sir sir uh, i remember you gave an interview to vivek bajaj sir sir over there you mentioned that uh, you had uh, some problems or challenges you faced regarding asset allocation so in, i think in 2020 you gave the interview uh, in last two years have you overcome that those challenges and if so how have you been able to do so thank you yeah actually i replied i think uh, you know when i was discussing lot of things uh, indirectly i covered and that is what i said i had my own challenges so if i take in terms of companies like ccl product or Am- ambika cotton or let's say a tata alex it's not like i identify i missed in identifying good companies but it was more like i took positions in a market when you know the whole small cap and mid cap index didn't do well but i just took big positions and i held and when you know the prices don't move for 2 3 years and you are in 20% you know kind of negative you start getting frustrated and bigger the position bigger the frustration so that is where i said now i have changed my approach a lot there is lot of technical analysis which helps in you know all these position building now i have a i try to make a view if the stock will do good for 2 years or not if it will not do good whether i want to buy it or not if i buy it i have my expectation expectation set that okay i am not looking for any return on this percentage of portfolio for next 2 years but then how should i add so now i don't go and buy all the 5% in one go even if i know fundamentally it is very very attractive problem kya hota hai ki when 2 years the stock doesn't perform and you see other stocks moving then you feel why you are an idiot why you are not buying that so which is genuine thing so that is why i am, i appreciate value also i appreciate momentum also but it has to be played differently so now i try to balance out i mean i don't buy in one go i try to identify the, the stock is in stage 1 stage 2 how long it is how long the pain is how the broader market is pehle main broader market dekhta hi nahi tha i am just a small and mid cap investor i will invest but if you see 2018 19 the money flow was not there in small cap and mid cap stocks you can see so when the big money is not flowing the stocks will not move so now there are a lot many things and that is what i have tried to build that is what when i quit job i wanted to build lot of these things i was not getting time so with ample time i am able to build lot of these systems i am having much better clarity and all of those things are playing a role like if you see in the october till october to here uh, you know unlike 2018 i reduced my exposure to small cap index 
uh, even when i was buying i was buying more of uh, you know uh, large cap index or small cap stocks where where i am very sure and there also i am buying small small positions because still if you look at even last week chart i don't know how many if you track if you look at the weekly candle of nifty the closing uh, price of the weekly candle of nifty is still just at the same level of closing price of previous week it has not gone above and when you look at all the highs which we have seen since october still we are creating a lower high we have not made a higher high and if you look at small cap index and again if you look at the 40 week moving average last 3 weeks same high is creating resistance and still you know nifty has recovered much better than small cap so now i take broader market money flow how to accumulate lot of these things which has helped me because now you know it has helped me to manage my volatility manage my drawdowns and i don't get frustrated that easily so yeah there has been lot of improvement and always there is a scope of improvement so that is where it is so because of all these factors it is it has improved all right sir so uh, sir one person has asked your views on fmcg sector uh, so pr simple view ye hai ki agar bada paisa banana hai to 40 50 pe ka stock khareed kar nahi banta to mere liye to sabse pehle yaar wahan pe out ho jata hai ki matlab uh, when i have things which are more attractive which can do uh momentum uh i know in last 3 months it has been one of the best performer but still i don't see how a, a sector can get such a momentum from here i mean it will get then your 50 p 40 p stocks will become 70 80 p stocks so frankly i don't track much beyond bottom up approaches so as i said uh, mrs vector was one company which i tracked uh, dfm unfortunately uh, fortunately didn't lose money and it has done well but at a sector level matlab theek hai compounder sector hai long term good opportunity but 10% growth companies at 40 50 pe somehow i could never understand and i could never feel that i can make big money so you know i have never i mean i always got something better even in 2000 yeah when i entered when i felt uh, when i felt that you know this could help to survive in the market so if you go through 2020 april vivek uh, my friend mashra vivek mashrani and i we did a webinar together and then again the same strength analysis i told and i did in this march similar kind of analysis i did then and maybe because you know defensive companies go up and also pharma and fmcg i purchased there so i mean i am not very bullish or bearish i think uh, Uh, yeah it, it's in a zone where it is not coming even my momentum screen so as i said lot most of my ideas come from you know these kind of systems it's not something which i see strong in the momentum screen it's not where i see fundamentally value so not much view but yeah few bottom up approaches few opportunities dairy could be another sector where i see <coughs> you know it went through lot of correction because of you know raw material prices so you know one company i have a small position dodla dairy i have accumulated recently around 5 10 520 again more of a techno funda uh, krbl was another company but now i think you know uh, again these are little dubious names it has come out of system but the typical big companies i am not invested and i mean i don't have any big view right sir so guys any names taken during the conversation are no reco in any forms uh, these are purely for educational uh, purposes these examples are cited so as to explain the concept better so sort of any limitations you see for multidisciplinary investing and trading yeah i will tell you uh, there are two three challenges and big challenges one is when you try to learn too many things many times you get confused what are you doing whether you are doing this or you are doing that and how do you allocate your time and you know how do you divide that becomes a big challenge second uh, you know it's like you are trying to do too many connect uh, you are trying to get into too many zones and the initial one two year period will be little frustrating because you will not see the connection it takes some amount of time when you start connecting the dots so you know that is the pain period that is second the third is when you try to learn many things you know kitab pe koi padhai nahi hoti sara padhai paise laga ke hoti hai so you have to allocate and uh, you know when you try to learn many things there will be lot of failures so i call it my experimentation or r and d cost so we have to ensure that you know when we are trying to do things or learn things where we are not comfortable of course we will discard it we are not comfortable but like i did i did a intraday trading or i did a two day kind of trading to realize this is not my cup of tea and this doesn't make me happy 
but to do that to realize that you need to do that so there will be a cost attached to it because theory pe kuch nahi hota to we have to ensure that we don't make big mistakes or whether we are a diversified investor or concentrated investor you know to realize who you are you have to do that and sometimes the cost you know the the cost could be higher so we have to ensure that we don't pay a very big price that you know we go 3 4 years behind so these are three four things we need to keep in mind uh, you know when we are trying to you know do all of this and fourth it takes time because uh, somehow uh, for me it was relatively easier i will tell you one reason because of my professional career where somehow i is able to you know look things more from a data perspective and able to do uh, and uh, i never look technical analysis as chart i look technical analysis only as a you know some some of the mathematical numbers and calculations and all so i could connect better so from what background we are coming all of that is important and it's not necessary to learn lot of things if somebody is very good at one single style and you know he's happy with it, it's working it's fine so we need to assess our own situation our own life our own journey our own aspirations what makes us happy and you know are we happy with our current style or not and then we should try to get into it whether we want to get into it or not but what i will tell is many of us we want to just mimic some big investor that will never happen if you are not uh, everybody cannot be mark minervini because if you are not getting a happiness in you know in momentum investing or you know 10 to 3 kind of trade you will not become that so find what is making you happy is reading lot of annual reports making you happy or is sitting 10 to 3 in, in front of system is making you uh, you happy or is writing a algorithm which is working and you are doing your job and your system is making money that does that make you happy so you have to find your happiness in the market and there are 20 different ways so you until unless you don't try you will not know and many times what happen because we have been fed only one style of investing we feel that is the only way of making money and i also suffered from the same problem unless i met different people with different styles and i realized the world is very big so you have to take care and factor all of this into account and then take your call all right sir so guys uh, i have uh, pinned to it two tweets uh, in which you can uh, access the free so a lot of uh, free and very informative videos uh, in which uh, kumar saurav has uh, shared the fundamental and technical side and how to go about evaluating a company and various case studies he has discussed over his youtube channel and again in case you want to have a look at his courses that is that that, that link is also available so if you find value obviously you can uh, resort to that so so gorav another question is like what uh, i mean what uh, what, what we say so are, uh, there are many audiences which have just started their journey so what would be your sensible advice to them how they should go about it and what is the reasonable expectation they should have from the market so two three things first thing don't make big mistakes because big mistake will make you fearful of you know re entering the market make small mistakes so that is the first thing i would suggest second uh, start slowly with equities so maybe still you know be even when as so i started in two innings my first inning was 2007 and because of various reasons i stayed away for four five years so when i started second inning i didn't start with 100% equities i started with mutual funds and i gave time and over a period of one one and half year when i got that comfort i shifted 100% so second is uh, you know whatever shift make it uh, you know uh, slowly over a period of time as you get more evidences that you are doing the right thing uh, third when i said don't do big mistakes which means you know if you are doing a fno without proper hedge management it's a big mistake so uh try various things but uh, you know limit your losses maximum possible losses uh for this try to read different kind of investing style so many times you know we just get uh, you know driven by only one style of investing maybe because this is what has been most popular but many times you may not align with it and you know in my, what i see is there are a lot of one line statements which are made that this type of investing style is good this is bad while well, this making money that doesn't make money while well, trading doesn't make money while well, investing makes money only well, long term investing make money it's the process and one has to align with the process so my suggestion would be try to find the best books on each of the styles like try to find the best book on long term investing or try to find the best book on you know can slim or try to find the best book on techno funda or on you know pure trading expose yourself take first two three years just as a learning ground without making big mistakes 
and then you will find where you are good at where your behavior is aligned where your emotions are aligned and where your you know academic and intellectual everything is aligned and then try to go deep into one so that is what i would suggest these three four things you know you should do very rightly said uh, kumar and kumar like uh, we know market you often talk about cyclicals and all and market also have various kind of cycles so also would you like to touch upon that that would be very helpful for our audiences uh like exactly like what in terms of market cycle yeah because uh, the uh, as you often say the entry exits are very important so the broader market how the economic cycle is doing how the and the business cycle is doing so there are various uh, you often to eat about it so so uh, i mean if you see september i mean june to september october was a time when you know i was very cautious because of the froth in the valuation and again if you take the same again i have made lot of videos again go through the videos so one is ultimately in the long term your index has to give the same 14% return so whenever the returns are you know 25% or the returns are minus 5% they will revert to mean and the market cycle of price and the economic cycle everything doesn't play in the same way sometimes you know it's lag lead effect all of that happens so my suggestion would be you know keep looking at broader market don't don't try to time the market a lot because you know it's not like we can't time the market but timing the market is not about being 100% or 0% invested uh, there are times when it is apparent that it is very attractive when it look very difficult and there are times when it look very uh, attract uh, when it very uh, you know very uh, you know pessimistic when the real opportunity is there so again look what kind of kaga return you had at a index level in september uh, there was another data i shared there was never a 24 month period when the small cap index didn't correct for more than 15% and in 23rd month the cycle waited the same there was another data i shared on the google trends of these kind of words like multi baggers and all so keep always a track on these kind of data points which will help you to you know avoid froth in the market and which will help you to you know get somewhere near if we talk in terms of current market uh, i think we i mean I, the problem is we always try to think market in terms of extremes but there are only 20 25% 10 20% the times when the markets are in extreme in terms of high valuation or low valuation 70 to 80% of the time market remains in that fair zone of plus minus you know 10% i think we have come back into that fair zone we came back of course for sure in that march period uh we have gone little fast we have gone above but the max i would expect is maybe a 10% correction until less globally there is too much of bad news and there is a sem- sentimental fall in market where you know the money flow stops and all the sip stop and because some people are selling and nobody is buying like happened in covid those kind of things i don't know if it will play out but i think we are somewhere in the middle we are nowhere in the extreme anything from this is a highly overvalued market or this is highly undervalued market a kind of you know plus minus 10% kind of thing all right so guys uh, i would uh, strictly recommend you the youtube channel you will get many diverse videos uh, and uh, the point of view and the hard work which has been put by kumar sorav you will really love and appreciate that so have a and look at uh, yeah so yeah, and those kind of will be very clickbait are, kind of thing yeah you the titles will be very clickbait so don't get discouraged because that is how youtube works if you don't make clickbait titles and screen nobody comes to watch but the inside content will be very very different yeah guys i have uh, from last more than a year i have been consistently watching his videos and gained a lot of information and uh, good insights and that are implementable as well but if you think uh, you will get some gold mine in the form of stick stock names then uh, that would be a wrong thing to uh, look for but yeah if you want to know the uh, essence and the hard work behind the videos uh, that would be really helpful for longer term in the investing arena so with this i would uh, once again say ki aapko ek bar zarur dekhna chahiye kafi interesting hai bilkul alag hai aapko you will get so much of stuff on youtube right entire student his perspectives are incredible so i would sincerely matlab aap log usko enjoy karenge so we have uh, sort of how good we are on time 
Uh, actually, we need to close. There is a call. I have to take at eight forty-five. Yar. Okay, okay. One last question from last speaker, and then we'll be wrapping it up. Vijay, Hello? you can ask. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks for your time. I had one query on uh, averaging up. So in this particular example, uh, it's about mastic. Uh, I was in hundred percent profit, and then I went ahead and added more. and now uh, i'm in loss so what's the theory to be followed when you are averaging up uh, thank you <coughs> so i mean uh, no particular views on stock but i think i was one of the people who called that mastec top so i'll tell more from that angle so see firstly look at mastec history of last 20 25 years and what has happened in it sector and this was the company which came with you know infosys and tcs and see where they went and where mastec went and why it happened why it didn't perform and then there was a period of 3 4 years where mastec has really done well so there was a little story of a person who came and i don't know if you are aware of majesco and the mastec majesco story and all of that and then that person had gone and then mastec also in the it wave it did well and it topped see one thing when the sector doesn't do well it's very difficult for the stocks to do well and sectors peak when everything is there in the euphoria but if you look at it valuations we never had that those kind of it valuations in last 8 10 years and if you look at my tweets the day it started with people will come back to office see why it worked there was a big digital push it's a great sector but the third big reason was the margins no everybody was working from home nobody was traveling so lot of margins in the it sector got saved and you got that margin lift and once the economy opens once people come back to office the sales team is traveling those margins you know that will you know going to hamper so it was more of a sector call that okay this sector is going to top out and then you look for the stock's weakness and when you would have seen mastic stock of course there is a weakness uh, i think i highlighted multiple times if i am not wrong it was it has done three top and then it fell and then there was a heavy volume sell off and all of that happened and now slowly you are getting into a zone where you know the europe and you know uh, the countries they are having their own issue and still i believe master gets law i have not yet tracked this business in detail so i am telling from a very limited information i believe master does lot of business for the uk government and all and again i have said that be cautious of the companies which are having high exposure to export you need to you know take care of Uh, how sustainable those numbers are how sustainable the growth numbers are built in baked into valuation so i have been bearish on it sector itself i am i am not yet bullish on it but i am not yet bearish on it so many times as i said 60 70% of the sectors there will be in no man's land so there is no view i think lot of froth has gone in it out of it but i still i don't see that big money getting interested in it and hence i am not interested and relatively i find sectors better so i believe the same will happen to mastec so it might get bottomed out i believe the froth is getting out but you know sometimes one sector gets out of favor it takes 2 3 years or you know the next big news or next growth driver sometimes you know to drive the big money and if there is high growth in some other sector the big money will chase those sectors which you know right now is happening in capital goods auto they might become overvalued and they might stay overvalued like it was there some time back and again they will fall 30 40% so you have to be very sure of your thesis your horizon your time view are you there for 10 years are you there for 2 years how do you see these the ex ceo you know going out how are you convinced about the new person how are you convinced about you know how they will you know how they will come up with the uh, things which are going in the europe and uk economy and then you need to take a call Uh, right so kumar so ankit you need to be very quick uh, saurav has another 4 minutes with us uh, otherwise we will ask him for closing remarks for the day yeah thanks prince uh, i was there just as a listener uh, thanks for giving me the uh, opportunity to speak i am a huge fan of saurav bhai and got a chance to meet him recently uh, i have no questions right now i just joined and i hope uh, he continues doing uh, his wonderful awesome work and i would also subscribe to the same thought uh, please subscribe to his youtube channel because i know how much of hard work he put in for each and every video <coughs> that's it prince bhai and uh, all the best sir bhai
थैंक यू थैंक यू अंकित एंड गाइस सच में बता रहा हूँ क्लिक बेट भी हम लोगों के कहने से कुमार सौरभ भाई ने ऐड करने शुरू करें ही इज सो मच पैशनेट अबाउट हिज वर्क ही नेवर कॉम्प्रोमाइज ऑन द क्वालिटी ऑफ वर्क और बेसिकली जो ही इज फ्रॉम एनालिटिक्स एंड डेटा साइंस बैकग्राउंड तो दैट डेटा एनालिसिस और डेटा माइनिंग इज हाई क्लास सो यू विल रियली लव एंड अप्रिशिएट द हार्ड वर्क कुमार सौरभ हैज बीन पुटिंग इन सो भाई कुमार एनी क्लोजिंग रिमार्क्स फॉर द डे एनी लास्ट एडवाइस फॉर आवर ऑडियंसेस नो आई थिंक लेट्स कीप मीटिंग लेट्स कीप माय व्यू इज लेट्स कीप टेक एवरी स्किल फ्रॉम यू नो वेरी ओपन हार्ट यार नेवर हैव दिस बायस कि ये काम करता है ये नहीं करता है ये टेक्निकल काम करता है बी वेरी ओपन इफ यू लुक एट द हिस्ट्री द बिगेस्ट पीपल हु हैव मेड 50 60 पीपल हु हैव मेड मनी फॉर डेकेड्स never ever they followed same style there were people who had 100 stock in portfolio and they have also made money with 10 stock also a techno funda also so be very open and then see where you are fitting in rather than you know sticking to one particular kind of style and there is one question which we got on twitter and we left so i'll just finish this question uh, what is the one technical analysis tool or indicator or chart pattern that is must use for fundamental investors Uh, my answer if life would have you know been so easy with one indicator everybody would have followed but i would suggest that uh, not a indicator but if you are somebody who doesn't have a five year 10 year kind of view if you are getting frustrated with you know one year two year if it doesn't make money try to be in the stocks which are in uptrend or try to be in the market which is in uptrend because you know we all like and maine sab kiya hai yaar wo downtrend market mein na paise lagate gaye lagate gaye aur pata nahi chalta tha uh, 2018 19 mein kitna gira ja raha hai small cap so try to understand at least the trend forget about chart patterns or indicators try to get the trend of the market and stock like i told abhi bhi ye jo nifty bhaga hai if you see still it's a lower high the last four rise which has happened since october everything is a lower high so be aware of this and how do you balance it out of portfolio whether you how much you go in cash or how much you divide into large cap small cap that all depends on your style so but trend is something which irrespective of knowing technical not knowing technical try to follow it it will help and uh, you know it will help you to manage your own levels of frustrations when things don't go in your way at least you will know why it is not going your way and you know those things Okay so we'll close with that and you know thanks for all the Thank questions you, you so know much. it's great to see all of you coming on a weekend so my pleasure and uh, you know we'll keep in touch Yeah sure sure we will invite you for some more sessions in time to come and guys one last thing before i close uh, you will see like uh, when uh, the market was uh, about to peak in october last year he has questioned it several times so if you see his old tweets so you will get a touch like where froth was there so he has questioned the retail investor time and again so my advice would be surely check his handle and surely you will at least dekho humko dono views leke chalne chahiye which not be like ki ha bhai jo tips de raha hai ya stock names de raha hai those are good handles there are so many hidden gems like uh, kumar saurabh bhai to aap log appreciate kariye unke hard work ko or get in touch it was really nice to have you today sorov so oh, thank you so much thanks prince thank, thank you everyone and so before we close i have a small announcement to wake so tomorrow we will be hosting anish munka around same time 7 pm tomorrow evening so our audiences uh, can join again tomorrow and it was really nice to have such a lovely audience uh, which keep uh, with us for almost 2 hours and patiently listen and ask quality questions from the speakers so thank you again uh, over for today good night